My name is Todd Wingate. I'm director of exhibitions and collections for RAM. So I've been working on this project since the very beginning. So we're really excited to have you all here. We've got a really, really strong partnership with uh, Cal State San Bernardino. We've been working with Ed Gomez and the art department and uh, lots of other, you and other, other entities on there. So we're thrilled to have, have you as a partner. Um, so we're gonna see today, this is a really live construction site. It's really hot in there, just so you know. We'll go kind of quickly. Um, we're going to see, this building is 66,000 square feet. We are currently activating 44,000 square feet. We are not activating the basement, which is another 22,000 square feet. Um, that'll be in another phase that comes several years down. Uh, Yes, Ophi's raising money, so if you've got some cash that you would like to uh, help us open the basement, <laughs> talk to Ophi. Um, so so the, the main floor will be about 10,000 square feet of gallery space that will house Cheech's permanent collection as well as new works that we acquire. Um, we're currently in conversation with several collectors about the possibility of their collections joining Cheech's as the core of, of the collection for this institution. And so we're very excited about that. And so I think that people have been waiting. You know, there's lots of collectors out there trying to figure out what do we do with this collection? You know, where, do, where does my collection go? Cheech is sort of paving the way for that. And I think that we are proving to be a good, a good partner and a good repository for that. So our hope is, is that we continue to to, to augment that collection and build it. We have a small acquisition fund, so we are also currently in the process of acquiring new work that's important, which allows us to be more strategic about either specific artists or specific works of art that we believe enhance our collection and expand uh, the, the base of knowledge that, that Teaches Collection shares. So we're going to see the main floor and the second floor. I'm going to take you in through the side entrance. We'll go past what, what is a warren of back of house spaces. It's the kitchen for the proposed cafe someday. Um, it's some storage, it's the restrooms. We'll go into the main Zocalo, which is the big open space. How many of you have been in the library before? Just you. So you won't know, you won't see the difference. <laughs> it's really, really different. And so we have cut a, a large hole in the floor of the second floor, so there'll be a two-story atrium. Um, we will show you where in the, in the Zocalo, we have commissioned Einar and Hamex de la Torre to, to create a two-story lenticular that will be the focal point of the, the, the Zocalo. Then take you through about 10,000 square feet of gallery space and show you the permanent collection storage space. Then we'll go upstairs and we'll look at about another 8,000 square feet of gallery space, which will be our temporary exhibition space that will rotate several times a year. Our first exhibition is a retrospective by Einar and Hamex de la Torre that we are co-producing with the Smithsonian Latino Center. Um, and so we were talking with the De La Torre brothers. Smithsonian has been talking with the De La Torre brothers. We decided to join forces, uh, create that exhibition here. And then that exhibition will go on tour after, after it leaves the Cheech. Um, up, we hope ultimately at the, at the Smithsonian, but we haven't, they haven't found a space for it yet. So we're hoping. So there, there was a couple of questions. Uh, yes. One of them was that um, uh, someone noticed that the, the the personal collection of Cheech, there's a lot of California. But when people come to here and visit, they'll be exposed to not just California Chicano art, but uh, national. So, so Cheech's collection is not encyclopedic of the entire school of Chicano art. Cheech's, you know, there are about 100 artists in the collection, mostly focused in California and Texas. Uh, a lot of Texas, and that really had to do with a gallerist that had moved from Texas to California early in Cheech's collection, collecting days, who introduced him to artists working in Texas. And so that's really how those relationships came to be. But there are lots of things that are not in the collection. Um, you know, this is, this is what spoke to one guy. And so we, you know, we believe that we will continue to collect and sort of fill in, not so much gaps, but sort of augment the collection in ways that make it more encyclopedic, more expansive. Um, that answer your question? Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Who was that Texas artist? 
Uh, there are several. Ricardo Ruiz is in the collection. Uh, oh, the one that helped the Chiefs get art. Oh, it was a gallerist, and I don't know her name. Her, okay. Yeah, back in the 90s, I want to okay. say. May, early, late 80s, early 90s. And then these renditions, this is what it's, it's going to look like, right, at the end? Right, right. So those are early um, renderings from the architects. And so there have been some changes, but that's sort of the way that we imagine this will look. They've taken some liberty with, with the artwork in terms of sizes and, and you know, there's a few things that aren't actually in the collection that they've put in there just as a, as a placeholder. Will there, uh, will there be other, like, um, obviously people come to look at the art, but are there gonna be like workshops, um, opportunities for people to learn craft, how to, uh, a you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So RAM, the Riverside Art Museum, our mission has always been dual, and so we are half education, half exhibition. So we've got a really robust education program, both adult classes, kids' classes. We have uh, contracts with multiple school districts where we're putting artists in the schools multiple times a year. And so that will continue to augment and change and to, to encompass the work that's coming through the Cheech. We've gotten a grant, I believe, to add Cheech's collection to the curriculum. Um, and so I think that's in process and working through that. But yeah, there's an, we will go through the education center here. Um, and then the expansion, when we go down into the basement someday, there'll be about 10,000 square feet of uh, education space. That will happen down there. I have one last question before we go Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's much cooler out here. I think <laughs> ask all your questions here. Got it. Well, perhaps uh, uh, Ophelia should answer this. We're interested, uh, our viewers and our listeners want to know how can they help. I know um, in our lead network, we've put out several calls. People can donate money. Uh, at one time, there was a uh, petition to nudge the city of Riverside to you know, pass uh, resolutions. Right, right. But at this point, um, and I don't know, if Ophelia, if you're, or are you, Todd, if, uh, if you could just tell us, people that are watching us or listening to us, what are, what's needed now in order to participate and help? I don't know if you... The challenge initially, obviously, was money to make sure that this happened. And so I shared with a few people, um, Todd was the original idea for this to come to fruition. But we had to raise a lot of money, and that was where we were concentrated. Also, to be respectful, RAM was going through a huge change, growing um, the limited staff that they had. People wanted to do all kinds of extra things to move it forward, and there just wasn't enough bandwidth. So now well, we've gotten through the challenges, getting all the approvals, the contracts done, and now the detail is making sure that this is moving along um, and at the same time thinking of future programming. Well the future programming is also going to necessitate monies and so grants and things like that. We have a lot of interest and it is nationwide and so I would tell you if you're planning to come to the inaugural activities make sure if there's reservations you do it immediately because I am overwhelmed with the thought of who's going to come to Riverside. We're going to have three days of activities, meaning we're going to have the gala uh, sponsored by Unidos. We're going to have a uh, concert with Los Lobos here across the street. We're going to have the opening family day, and the, and the detail of that is incredible. So the challenge for us right now is how does that flow? given the people we have on board. Uh, so it, it isn't as easy as say, you all come, come and help. We don't know how you're going to need, to, uh, what help we're going to need at this moment, but we know that there will be uh, assistance needed. Everybody and their brother wants to donate art to the Cheech. You know, it, they haven't got it yet, that this isn't for you all come and, and this is going to be uh, art or artifacts housed at the Cheech. So it's a huge challenge, but the one thing we want to make sure is that 
we have people such as yourselves from you know I, I have to say this and I know it's probably irrelevant it's taking time but I, I mentioned to James um, not a week goes by that I don't think of Graciano Gomez because he uh, and I are old friends and he we would joke about crossing the line and he's the one that would cross the line over here and he brought Enrique many times to our uh, events for Latino Network and it's people like that that if this is going to go it means that we're going to have to outreach both ways and because we can't get to San Bernardino as much it isn't because we don't want to there aren't enough people to do the work to make sure that it is a um, impactful so we can share information with you just like now and then hopefully there'll be other events or you invite us to go talk over there um, but if you say to go to Meatla during a Kiwanis breakfast the, nobody's going to hear you so please don't and I can say that because I've, I've done that. Um, so it's what can they do? We are going to have opportunities for volunteers. And when that is framed, then we will be able um, to reach out to you. And by the same token, if you have ideas on what we can do together, then please go through Drew, uh, Todd, and so forth. So I don't want to talk anymore. No, that's fine. And, and just uh, please count on lead for whatever it is. I mean, we have volunteers. We can, I mean, we could, we do, we could do all sorts of stuff. We're, we're highly skilled at large scale events. So feel free to call on us. We want to be your partner. So, and thank you for all your work because you, you, Ophelia, you've been instrumental in getting us to this point. And thank you for invoking the, the name of, uh, of one of our lead padrinos, Graciano Gomez. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And of course, we're joined today by one of our other lead padrinos, Jose Angel Gutierrez. So, Jose Angel is uh, uh, maybe is one of our elders here in the Movimiento. I don't know if there's any words you want to say to our viewers or listeners about the role of Chicano art in the movement. Anything to the... Chicano art, to my perspective, uh, became protest and political art. And that's what we use to put our posters out, to put our messages out. And we used to use silk screens and that sort of thing, and T-shirts, and we even made our own bumper stickers. So this is long time in coming. I congratulate you for doing it, because being and becoming is a big gap, and you all are becoming. Thank you. Uh, this will be what we call the Zocalo, uh, so gathering space in the, the core where events can happen, lectures can happen, um, you know, all kinds of community activities. What you just came through is back of house, so everything from storage to telecom rooms, restrooms. Um, this space here is our future cafe. Space behind it is the, the, the kitchen. We are not doing a cafe at the opening. We've been thinking about a lot about restaurants being hit, hit by COVID, and we wanted to make sure that we're being a really good community partner and pushing the audiences that are coming to the Cheech out into local restaurants so that they're supporting our local economy and not compete, and so our cafe would compete with that. So we will have a cafe at some point. It just seemed like now was not the time. Um, we talk a lot about being a really good community partner with downtown and the merchants downtown. City of Riverside is a great supporter of ours, and so we want to make sure that we continue to be a good partner there. So again, events will happen here. So where you see those two posts, that a big wall comes out of the ground, and that is where we have where the uh, Deratora brothers. It'll be a two-story lenticular piece that we've commissioned from them. Uh, there's a freestanding gift shop that happens here, and then this is a community gallery. So the thought is that you could come into this space, experience the community gallery at some point, go to the cafe, see a little bit of art go to the gift shop without having to pay the entrance fee so that people could come in and get some sort of experience. Um, you know, we have a lot of first-time museum goers who aren't sure that it's something they want to see. So it's really about creating multiple points of entry for them. So any, any questions about, about this space? I have a quick question that people may ask. When they walk in, is there a fee? 
or is it like just walk in or like what do people do if they want to when it's already and done there there will be a so you could come in and experience the the community galleries gift shop you could be here to see the galleries and to go upstairs you would pay an admission fee all right let's go this way we have about 10,000 square feet of exhibition space on the main floor. Mostly this will house the permanent collection. So the very first exhibition will be all Chicha's collection. But as we continue to augment with new collections and additions, we will continue to rotate those through. We will also rotate some of Chicha's collections through. We do not have enough wall space to show the entire collection all one time. Uh, so some things will be up all the time. There's some iconic pieces that will be we think up always. There are other works that are work on paper that we'll have to rotate every so often for conservation. We don't want things exposed to light for too, too long. And so we will continue to rotate out. Ophelia asked me to talk a little bit about the elements of the building that we retained. What we said to the architects early on was don't touch anything unless you have to. And so they pulled out a drop ceiling and left, you know, which gave us all this wonderful sort of poured in place beamed concrete. Um, all of the, the electrical and the data and the, the HVAC systems that are up, the whole thing will get painted out of gray so it'll all sort of disappear. These are the original concrete floors. We pulled the carpet up, they're being polished. And so it'll be polished concrete, the original brick. Um, a lot of the elements like the eyebrow over the door, the original stairs, all of those are being retained. So anywhere we could, we maintained what was, what was going to exist. And then other than you mentioned the lighting. What else kind of degrades art? Like what, what other considerations when you're building a space for art? You mentioned the lighting. Like what, what, what other factors are? Uh, yeah. So we, we, watch, we watch for a uh, standard of humidity control. We watch for a standard so that you're not having a lot of variation in both humidity and uh, uh, temperature. Um, we monitor light so that we can tell you how many hours at how many candle light foot candles a piece is getting at any given time um, and duration and what the duration of that is so there it, you know we just pay attention to all of that as we're navigating that so we have a formula that says if this is a pastel on paper it's been on the exhibit now for five and a half months we should probably replace it and give it a rest and let it not be sitting in light all the time at RAM, we have lights that come on and off when people, whether people are in the space or not, so they're motion censored. Here, not so much, we anticipate a fairly steady flow of traffic, which will not give us that same kind of, of opportunity. You'll see these stripes in the drywall all along. We have a, a it's, it's a steel hanging system that comes from Japan that will allow us to hang everything from a very thin airplane cable, um, which will allow us to hang much more quickly, move things around a little bit better. Any more questions as we keep going? And, and what is the cycle of like special exhibitions? A few months at a time, there's special exhibitions? Yeah, my guess is upstairs changes probably two or three times a year. This collection initially probably a year, and it won't all change. We'll rotate things in and out, but you may not notice or so you someone know. may want to plan, you know, I'm going to go three times, four times during the year. Right. Because you're not going to see always the exact same thing. Right. Upstairs will change all the time. Downstairs, less so. Is there going to be like a membership program, or is it on a case-by-case -case basis when you come? So RAM has a membership program that if you are a member, you get in free. Um, if you're a member I, I, of RAM, I would, I think, because there is, they're going to be the same, you know. So if you, if you buy a ticket here and it's ten dollars, it gets you in here, gets you in there. Our plan is, is that people will go back and forth between the two spaces. There'll be opportunities for exhibitions that. To get the full breadth of the exhibition, you'd have to go to both sites. We may tackle the same topic from very different perspectives, but then bounce you back and forth so that you would get an opportunity to see a wider range of things. There's often some, there's some smaller galleries there that might work better for an exhibition that could go here. So there's lots of, lots, lots of crossover. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe for the, the folks who aren't familiar with the area, maybe you can just kind of uh, give us a quick lay of the land. We're right next to the 
historic mission in mission in and then is how there. far is the ram the headquarters ramp. we so we occupy then the next city block and then in the next block there is the municipal auditorium and then we are next door so we're in the next block over and there's a metrolink station two blocks away well, so it makes it very easy for somebody very who wants easy. to just take the very metro. Very easy. It's actually a little further than two blocks, but it's just on the other side of the freeway. So people coming in from LA, from Pomona, uh, Orange County, you know. And we so. have more uh, hotel space available now too. If people want to make a, a weekend of it, like for the inaugural activities, you do want to for out of towners, there there's space. Do we have a proposed timeline for the inaugural? Um, Yes, on, um, I mentioned that right now the uh, May 6th, not 5th, but the 6th, we will be having a gala sponsored by Unidos. All of this is under uh, the Cheech inaugural activities. That will be on Friday night. Then on Saturday, we're having a concert next door at the Municipal Auditorium. We're looking uh, to book Los Lobos, who are friends of Cheech's, and we're trying to make a big deal out of it. Well, we don't have to make a big deal, just, you know. Um, so, and so then on Sunday, we plan to have a family day so that local families can come and have some uh, activities there, uh, have lowrider cars all around here, and then uh, have the opening ceremony, if you will, the ribbon cutting on Sunday. So it, we're talking about May 2022. Yes. yes. May 2022. So again, just the, the end of the gallery space on this floor, on the other side of this wall, is about 2,2500 square feet of what's going to be exhibition uh, collection storage space, where we'll store the collection. Uh, once we do the, the fundraising for the, the basement level, that will move down and we will open this wall up and there'll be, we'll just extend the, the gallery spaces a little further. So. We had, there was a question about the interactivity like in the, there's certain museums where i know the kids and the adults can touch things do stuff i don't know if this particular chicano art lends itself i don't know but do you foresee as part of this chicano art being some kind of interactive thing i don't know so we have just hired the first artistic director of the cheech and she started on monday and i and, and so that's a that's a to be determined. I mean, I think she will develop a really robust program, but that's that's in her scope. And so we've been shepherding this to this point to where now it's it's uh, Esther's opportunity to uh, flesh all that out, figure that stuff out. So I am sure the answer is there'll be all kinds of things, all kinds of opportunities. We do now. We have lots of, at RAM, you can come on a Sunday. There's all kinds of hands-on things and things to do. Um, less interactive in terms of the exhibitions themselves, but uh, certainly, yeah, and we're certainly looking at all of that. All right, let's you're go. Gonna, you're going to love her. Yeah, she's cool. Maria Esther Fernandez. Let's go upstairs. Uh, they're bringing in a big beam in the next couple of weeks that will flush this out so where the walkway comes out about eight feet, even with this wall. The lenticular back wall is right here. So this will be more exhibition space. I think we've got about 7,000 square feet of exhibition space on here. We are repurposing the office suite from the original library, which is behind this wall. There are new restrooms going in at the end of this hallway. This is gonna stay open, so you, the people up here are gonna be able to look yes. down there. Yeah, there's a, there is a, a wall here, but there is space on this side and space on this side, and you can walk all the way around just not along this particular one. So you remember back in the day when you had those little pieces of plastic and you'd see the blinking eye and you'd turn it one way and it would wink or something, it's like ribbed plastic. De La Torre Brothers have taken that to a new level where they're doing incredibly detailed, big multi-images that overlap so that as you walk past the image, it changes completely from one thing to another that's going to be nine feet wide and two stories tall. Again, polished con concrete, uh, original brick, uh, painted out gray ceiling to, to mask all of the... You've seen it in, in museum exhibitions where they've built out or carved out small spaces within an exhibition to create video, small video rooms. We had an opportunity with the space 
here where they had this odd training room that was adjacent to the galleries. And so what we've done is converted that into a permanent video gallery. And so everything from when the De La Torre brothers are here, they've got multiple uh, film reels about their work that they can show. We can show a video of Cheech talking about his collection. Cheech is working with Robert Rodriguez with the possibility of a film program that would be housed here in the Cheech that would then create films. And you know, with artists creating content at the way they're doing, and just everybody doing it with, with technology being the way it is these days, there's just lots of opportunities for new Art content. that you're expecting here, there's going to be a, a newer technology element? You know, I, I think we're pre getting prepared for it. You know, what we said to the architects was, we want, don't touch anything that you don't have to, and give us the most flexible spaces possible. So, because we don't know what's coming next, right? We don't know where artists are going to take us, so let's make sure that we've got capacity to meet them where they're at. Yeah, and from looking at the renditions, it looks like just a lot of open space so that you can um, you can move things in on a temporary basis exactly. and shift exactly and be flexible right? exactly. So this is the original children's library for Riverside Library. Uh, this is going to be how's our education program. So if you're coming in to take a class, do some weekend hands-on projects, this will be the site where that happens. We have similar sites at Ram, similar spaces at Ram. So are there, and, and, and this is not meant to put you on the spot, but do, do you know some of the names that people should be familiar with in terms of Chicano art movement? What are the, some of the names that you think uh, that would, for someone who's growing up and doesn't know, they'd be exposed to... I in in Chicha's collection, collection. Yeah. you know, chicha has got this really wonderful range of artists, and so it's everybody from some of Los Four, Carlos Almaraz, John Valadez, Frank Romero, uh, Gronk from Moscow, Patsy Valdez is in the collection. We are just about to announce that we have acquired two pieces by Judith uh, Hernandez, who was the first woman in, in, of Los Four. And so, you know, a big, a big wide range of, of the artists there. Um, Ricardo Ruiz in Texas, Cesar Martinez, um, Wayne Healy, uh, David Botello, you know, East Los Streetscapers. Um, most of them are in the collection. So it just depends on, you know, who, whose work Cheech came across, what spoke to him. You know, there are artists he's got a piece or two of. There's artists where he's got 20 or 30, where he's collected them deeply over a number of years. Um, and I don't know if you ask Cheech if he'll tell you who his favorite is, because I think it depends, you know. <laughs> depends on, Cheech rotates work out of his house at any given time, and so you can always tell who he's loving by what's, you know, what's in the living room. That, that leads me to another question, and perhaps this is a question for Cheech, but he, he so this is gonna house his, his, uh, his collection, but assumably he's still gonna decide what goes in his house, maybe even rotate, I don't know, is there some kind of agreement where if he wants to exhibit something at his house from here, it'll go back to his house for a little bit? And yeah, there's, there's a whole agreement in there's place. There's a whole agreement on uh, being able to relocate pieces. And will some of the pieces be available at the, the headquarters RAM or the other spaces, just, or just the tall? It depends on what we're doing exhibition-wise. So there certainly would be times where, if it's appropriate, an exhibition at RAM could have work out of Chicha's collection. You know, if we're doing a, you know, exhibition on portraits at RAM, there would be lots of opportunity to show Cesar Martinez and um, Yolanda Gonzalez and, you know, several portrait artists that are in that collection over there as part of a broader exhibition. There also may be times where the space, which is smaller over there, could be very appropriate for a more intimate exhibition that we might house it over there. So I think, you know, we're still, Maria Astor and I are, she's been here now four days. We're just now getting started into, you know, these are, these are conversations that once she gets up and running, we will be having for a long time to come. That's everything I've got to show you. Why don't we can go back outside. If you think of any more questions, I'm happy to answer them in the parking lot. So. I knew Cheech was touring his collection, and I said, you know, let's let's at least test drive this. Let's see what happens. So you're the mastermind between that connection. Well. Yeah. <laughs>
Not really. I mean, I, I mean, it was just kind of like, let's try this and see what happens, right? And so, but what happened was that the reaction from our community exceeded anything we, we anticipated. I mean, people were lined up around the block to get into the opening. City manager at the time said, hey, what's Cheech gonna do with his collection? I was like, well, I don't, I, we just met him this morning. We don't know, right? And so four weeks later, we were meeting with Cheech with a quickly designed program that says, hey, we've got this building, you know, is there an opportunity, you know, is there a there there? That's so awesome. And, you know, so I mean, because Cheech was starting to really think about what happens to his collection, where does it go, and starting to give it away piece by piece. He says, you know, in, if you go back, and I think it's on YouTube, if you go back and look at the original press conference, she says, I never dreamed this, right? Never dreamed that the collection could stay together, that there would be a place where all this happens at once. And so, you know, I mean, it even, I, I think, still amazes Cheech. Um, he gets choked up. He does, a lot. You know, when we talk about what this is, because I don't, you know, I mean, this isn't, we came to him and said, here, all you've got to do is give us the art, we'll do the rest. Yeah, you know, a huge right, for your side. right, it means a lot to a lot of people. I, I, um, but who would have thought? I mean, it's just it's it's insane that it's happening here, right? And so the big and question Riverside. from a lot of folks in LA is, wait a minute, how 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 why Riverside? How'd you do this in Riverside? That's right, it's needed. You know exactly. And the other thing that's cool is is that you know Cheech will be one of a thousand museums if it were in LA. You know here yep. it's going to be yep. The, it, it is going to be a cultural uh, center point. I mean, it's going to drive what happens here artistically for a very long time. Um, and we think, you know, all boats rise. It's going to attract a lot of attention. It's going to attract artists. It's going to attract all kinds of good things to our community and to inland Southern California that, you know, quite honestly, wasn't coming to us before. Right. You know, and allow the artists that are working here to have some opportunities that might not have occurred otherwise. So I think, you know, this is, it's, you know, nobody was interviewing us for Art News two years ago, right? <laughs> you know, we weren't in the New York Times two years ago, you know, and now, now this project is, and I think it only gets better. So it's exciting. It's, it's exciting. So the we see the construction is moving along quite well, and they're probably going to be done soon. When will the fun process of putting all the paintings and all the artwork in place. So our, our plan is this. Current day where we get keys in theory is uh, the 31st of January, right? 31st of January, 22. We anticipate that we'll take a month to commission the building, move staff in, understand you know, all the various systems, how, how the electrical works, how the lighting systems work, how the HVAC works, how security works get used to the building, make sure that we're comfortable with climate control and security measures in all the various spaces. We think we will move the collection over probably end of February, beginning of March. Um, the plan is, is to install Cheech's show about the middle of March, install the De La Torre Brothers show, end of March, beginning of April, because it's a complicated exhibition. Their work is all glass or uh, electric light boxes. Some of the pieces are quite large in multiple pieces and coming from all over the country. So it's a, it's a different install than installing the paintings. And so the anticipation is, is that we will take some more time to, to install that exhibition and then work out all the details about, you know, how, to, how does traffic flow? You know, where does this happen? Where does that happen? Um, you know, you can plan on paper all you want, but you know, once you actually get into the building, there's always something different about the way things actually work. So, that sounds exciting. We're we're very excited. What do you see as the economic impact of this museum to this area, but also to the Inland Empire as a whole? What? So John Husing from the Economic. In the Economic Partnership. Partnership has done a economic impact study, and is we have that out, right? Is yes, that out? Of, so, so we can we certainly get that to you. It's the initial projection before COVID was I'm sorry. The initial projection before COVID was like uh, 22 million dollars of economic impact to this area, and then of course COVID hit, uh, with including those 
reservations, he still maintained that we were going to uh, raise about 23 or 23 million dollars was going to be the number. I would say now that it not being an economist, my gut level of what's going on in Riverside, it's going to have a huge impact uh, in the city of Riverside and the surrounding areas. We talked about activities uh, coming here or being presented here and people coming from all over the United States because they want to see the museum. Well, if you see the museum, look at everything else we have in the area. So, and the fact that this is the first it's going to be huge. And if you don't think other museums are going to want to see what, what are they doing over there? We had, uh, those of you who know Eduardo Diaz, the director of the Latino Center at the Smithsonian, he did uh, in Dialogo series that Unido sponsored. And he said he, he was the moderator. Uh, we had, um, who did we have that time? The De La Torre Brothers. It, it was the De La Torre Brothers. And he said, I can't believe that this is happening in Riverside. He said, it's not San Francisco, it's not LA. It turns out, as you know, Eduardo Diaz from San Bernardino. He grew up in San Bernardino, if, you, if some of you may not know that. His mother uh, was Elisa Diaz, who was on the school board in San Bernardino with my father-in-law. So when you talk about a small world, it's like, oh. So he was very uh, charmed and enthused that this was happening in an area where that he grew up. And so he ended up uh, being a sponsor of the series because he was so thrilled about it. So the economic impact, it's, it's going to be huge and more than I can imagine and more than you can imagine because you're going to be part of it. So we have two of our higher education institutions here in this area, UCR and CSUSB. Um, and, you know, we have several community colleges. How do you envision partnerships with, um, you know, higher education institutions um, and our community colleges, um, you know, developing between the Cheech and with those institutions? Uh, We've already started. Yeah, so we have, we have solid partnerships with multiple departments at UCR. Um, we have a really, really strong partnership with the art department at, U at Cal State San Bernardino. We've been working with Ed Gomez. In fact, the exhibition that follows the De La Torre Brothers retrospective will be the next iteration of the Mexicali Biennale, which happens, as you probably know, on both sides of the border and all over California. And so we've been working with Ed and his team for the last year or so so that that will happen here next. And so that next iteration, uh, the De La Torre brothers have done a residency at Cal State before in the glass shop. They will go back and we're raising money right now. So if anybody's got a little cash left, um, you know, we are, we are working to fund that, that retro or the, uh, the uh, residency out there so that they can go out and work with the students at, at Cal State. Uh, in their glass shop with Catherine Gray. We've also had conversations uh, from the beginning with La Sierra University, the art department there, and also Cal Baptist. And so we tried in, uh, excuse me, uh, Riverside Community College District because we wanted to make sure that we established those partnerships with the educational institutions. Other thing that's going to happen, and Maria Astor is, is going to start working on this when she gets her feet wet, um, is that we anticipate that this is a education hub, that this is, there is an educational component built into with access to the collection where scholars can come, study the collection, you know, deeper dives into various artists that are in the collection. Um, you know, there's all kinds of opportunity there. And so development of a research center um, we think happens. It, it, it's not in place at the moment, it's, but it's coming. Please, a short resume on these De La Torre brothers. De La Torre brothers, uh, born in Guadalajara, educated in um, Cal, State, Cal State Long Beach, uh, primarily originally glass blowers, uh, doing really incredible glass sculpture. Um, they have shown all over the world. Um, they are about to have a piece uh, included in the Smithsonian's collection. Um, and then they started doing these lenticulars a while back, and so now they have this mix of both. So they've been in Cheech's collection for a number of years. Um, they're in lots of big private collections around, around the country. And so Cheech and I started having a conversation early on 
when we started talking about the temporary exhibition space about who would, what would we put there? And we both said, ah, De La Torre Brothers would be cool. Um, and so we started having conversations with the brothers. Turns out so was the Smithsonian Latino Center. And so at that point we, we came together and said, what if we co-produce this? and so share some resources. It allows us to make it a bigger, better exhibition. It gives the Cheech some cachet right off the bat, being aligned with the Smithsonian. Um, you know, the Cheech has brought a lot of really interesting projects to us already. Uh, currently at RAM, we have an exhibition that is out of LACMA's collection. And so we are one of four institutions in Southern California that was funded by the Terra Foundation and LACMA to mount a series of exhibitions out of LACMA's collection here. Um, pretty cool for us as a small regional museum to, to have that collection and have those things keep coming to us. Um, so the Cheech, you know, again, that, it's that all, all boats rise thing. You know, it's helping Ram rise, Riverside rise. It's put us on the map in, in, in some interesting ways. So people are paying attention to us now, which is, is pretty cool. <laughs> tell, tell them about the Founders Wall. Ah, uh, Founders Wall. So if you have donated to the Cheech at 5,000 5, or above, um, you know, you go to a museum, you see these standard, everybody's name on the walls yeah. that donated. And so we thought we'd do something a little different. So we've commissioned the De La Torre brothers to create a sculpture that will include all the names of all of those donors. And so it is this five foot tall bronze human heart that is covered in, uh, Papel Picado patterning, and then it turns into a nopal, and then all of the names are etched in these, so it goes from bronze to steel, and then all the names are etched in the paddles of the nopal, which reminds Ofi of, is it you that were telling me? When you cross the border, there's a big Nepal that people scratch their names in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that everybody, that everybody yeah, knows. Pulsation number. Yeah. Right, that every, everybody knows it. So, <laughs> so, that's, so that's coming. It's going to be just a cool place to, to come hang out and see amazing art, right? Some of it that's toured, some of it nobody's ever seen before, right? So, so go online if you want more information to stay, stay tuned. Posting things. Yeah, By do, the way, do you, if you go to Ram, we're hiring for both Ram and Cheech is in there. <laughs> Just anything that for more information. Sure. For for more information, obviously I'd like you to um, go online, riversideartmuseum.org, uh, the cheechcenter.org. That will give you updates on, on what the progress is, uh, programming, and so forth. Certainly, if you would like to donate or you know somebody, this is my spiel, so I'll give you my secret. When I ask people for money, and I'm, I'm not embarrassed to say this anymore, I tell you I'm going to ask for money. Enrique, I'd like to have a cup of coffee with you. I just want you to know I'm going to ask you for money. Now, it's okay if you say no, but I'd like to share with you what we're doing. And if I give you the spiel and then you say, you know, I really can't right now, which a lot of people, you know, when you're asked for money, you know whether you can give it or not. So I've cut through all that. You know, it's, it's okay. But if you can't, you may know somebody that you can direct me to. So please give me those names. And if you can't do that, I've won still because you have information that you will be able to share with others about what we're doing and I don't have to make trips to go share that information. So you are a partner with us to make sure that this information goes out to as many people as possible. So that it's very simple. Uh, we have a nice cup of coffee. Those that know me bring their checkbook already, but um, that's my spiel. So anyway, thank you for coming. I, I hope that you come back. I know you're gonna be excited to come. You need to make your reservations for May um, well, no, Jose Angel Gutierrez, see, see, so I, he was here, he was here at RAM and did a book, uh, it was a book tour presentation, and yeah, they said, oh, look who's coming, so yeah, I'm glad, nice to see you again, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, All right. thank you. Thank you, right, everybody. Thank you.